footfall moments made easy. That's totally Target. This Big South broadcast is brought to you in part by Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. Sunbelt Rentals, we have equipment for that. First Citizens Bank, forever first. And Jersey Mike's, a sub above. Tropical Storm Ian has moved out of the Gate City and we're ready to kick off the 2022 Big South football season from Greensboro, North Carolina. It's the Big South on ESPN3. Hello and welcome inside the broadcast booth at Truist Stadium. I'm Spencer Turkin alongside my partner Damian Banks and we have a good one here for you folks. North Carolina A&T hosting Bryant and the Aggies have had the run game going really strong here in the beginning of the season. Bulldogs versus Aggies, Spencer, and it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. The Aggies run game has been the strength of this ball club so far this season and it starts up front with the bigs but the running back Bayshaw Tootin, outstanding burst, outstanding power, outstanding balance, 140 yards rushing, two touchdowns, one through the air like Superman last week in the win versus South Carolina State. Should be a good matchup this afternoon. Uh, it certainly should be. And the Bulldogs from Smithfield, Rhode Island, they've got something up their sleeve to try and slow down that offensive rushing attack for the Aggies. And his name is Joe Andreessen sitting at linebacker. Joe Andreessen, sideline to sideline linebacker. Good speed at that linebacker position, but more importantly, a quarterback of the defense sets all the keys. Look for Joe Andreessen to make a major impact on today's ball game. We're ready to kick off the 2022 Big South football season here in Greensboro. It's the Bulldogs and the Aggies, and it's coming up next on ESPN3. With you here from Truist Stadium, Bryant. And North Carolina a t getting set to kick off the 2022 Big South campaign. The Bryant Bulldogs, their first trip through the Big South, coming on over from the NEC, North Carolina a t One last lap around the conference before heading to the CAA. And it should be a solid matchup here between these two clubs, both teams earning their first victories last week on the season. Damien, your keys to the game for the Bryant Bulldogs partner have to weather the storm. The Aggies and Hurricane Ian rip through the south and the east coast. Prayers to everyone involved in that. Also, the Bulldogs have to limit North Carolina a and run game. a and teams lead heavily on the run. And lastly, they got to convert on third down 53% on the season, which is great, but it has to be higher today, which would probably be tough field conditions. We're about set to kick the things off here. You gotta play bully ball, control the line of scrimmage, run the football, run Aggies, run almost 300 yards on the ground versus last week's opponent, South Carolina State. And you gotta be special on special teams. Win the special teams battle, you win the game most times. Ethan Getman will go ahead and boot this one away, and we are ready for football in the Gate City. North Carolina AT going to take this one out. It is Tamon Cook who has his legs taken out from under him Tamon right Cook. around the 22-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for Jalen Fowler, the redshirt senior quarterback, one of four quarterbacks to play for North Carolina A&T last week against South Carolina State. The interesting ball game last week for sure. Jaeger went out with a concussion. Backup came in, went out with the leg injury. Then you get Fowler into the ball game, short notice, and he played really well given the circumstances. The steady back there at the quarterback position, really giving the ball off the two to set up the play action passes and threw a couple touchdown passes in the process. You see Fowler there trying to get the signal in. Fowler will work out of the shotgun. The Aggies keep it on the ground here. Bayshaw Tootin, the Big South offensive player of the week from last week, and he's able to gain a couple. Three straight 100-yard rushing games for Bayshaw Tootin. And like we mentioned in the opening part, great balance, great speed. Really tough runner runs behind his pads. Did a lot of in-between tackle running last week versus South Carolina State. Tries to bounce that one out for a minimum game. Second and seven, Fowler 
Quick drop, throws towards the outside, completes the pass to Sterling Buckhol Burkhalter, excuse me, and the Aggies with their first first down of the day. Easy pass to Burkhalter for Fowler on the first pass play of the game for the Big Jones. Try to get your quarterback in a rhythm. Again, Fowler came in off the bench last week to lead the Aggies to a victory. Stack twins formation. First and 10 from the 37. Fowler completes another one quickly to Jamison Warren from just down the road in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. A glorified handoff there from Fowler to Warren, just trying to pick up a block and let your athletic ability take over. Again, getting Fowler in a rhythm early in this ballgame. It'll be second and six. Tootin, and he gets wrapped up and thrown down by Joe Andreessen, who, Damian, we mentioned in the open, he is the back-to-back -back Big South Defensive Player of the Week, and he is an absolute monster out on the field. And that's going to be the key matchup throughout the ball game. Can the Aggies run at Joe Andreessen? That time, Andreessen read his keys, met Tootin in the hole, and stopped him for no gain. Brings up third and six. A flag and some movement. This one is coming back five yards, as we'll hear from referee Brandon McCain for the first time tonight. Yeah, it looks like he may have forgotten to turn on his microphone. There is some weather that has now moved into the region. Starting to see some rain drop from the sky. There's been plenty of that around Greensboro over the last 48 hours. And that's going to play a factor in this ball game. Pre-snap penalty setting the Aggies back five yards. Coach Washington talked about the pre-snap penalty, trying to limit penalties as a whole throughout the game. Third and ten. Fowler looking. Flushed from the pocket. He's going to tuck it and run. He's to the 45 and will awkwardly crash into the ground. And that will be short of that first down marker. Now you see Fowler taking off. Had a... A lot of green grass in front of him. Tried to plant across the green to pick up that first down, but the field a little bit soggy from the rain from Ian. It's going to be stopped short of the first down. Bring the four down. Some of the types of things that we're expecting to see in this game tonight because of what has taken place over the last couple of days. The grass field, though, here at North Carolina A&T has held up relatively well. It did drain completely through. Yeah, we were both on the field at several times earlier before the game, and the field has held up pretty well. Caleb Brickhouse on to boot this one away. It's a high floater. Fair catch signaled for it and secured by the Bryant Bulldogs. So we'll see Sebi Eckhouse for the first time tonight. He has been absolutely spectacular since he became the starting quarterback for Chris Merritt's ball club at LIU last week. 19 of 30, a buck 80 through the air, and still got the job done on the season. Eckhouse a playmaker for sure at the quarterback position, and he had an incredible freshman season at the FCS level in the NEC Conference. Let's see what he can do with stepping up a level to the Big South. Eckhouse releases his first pass and is able to complete oh, yes, right. that ball to oh, Anthony oh, Frederick, his favorite target, oh, a 5'11 senior out of Miami Central. Of course, Chris Merritt, the head coach in his fourth season for the Bryant Bulldogs, a Miami high school head coach of his own at Columbus High School, really trying to make a concerted effort to recruit the Miami area. And Miami Central, one of the top high school programs in the nation. This one stays on the ground, and the Bulldogs able to gain a couple. As I shot Bowler, the Metro Line Christian graduate who transferred from University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Stands at just five foot four, 175 pounds, but Damian, you and I were on the field earlier. You saw those tree trunks that he has his legs, and you know why he's able to compete at the Division I level. He's small in stature, but very stout. Down low and it's going to be hard to bring him down. Aggies defense, though, want to tee off on Eckhouse on third and long. Third and three. The miscommunication 
as Eugene Zig pass rush last week for the Aggies versus South Carolina State really did them well on third and long situations six tackle for losses as a defense last week two sacks in that ball game for Devin Harrell as well Jimmy O'Brien will handle the punting duties this evening for the Bulldogs He's able to sidewind kick that one across the 40. It will take a Bulldog roll to the 36-yard line, and that is where Jalen Fowler will step out onto the field for another drive after this timeout. Nothing, nothing ball game here in Greensboro. We're back after these messages. You're tuned in to the Big South on ESPN3. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. There's over 450 million Hoopers out there. One will outscore the country and put Norman on the map. Less than 1% of high school players get a scholarship. Odds a freshman will lead the nation in points and assists? One, and never been done. 1.3% of college players get drafted. Only one will drop 48 and 11 in the conference finals. One will know this is just the beginning. Trey had a one and a half billion chance to get here, but he saw a possibility. The B1 Performance Patch elevates physical functions by transforming carbs into glucose used to fuel the body. Don't compete without it. Visit buyb1.com or on social media at B1 Patch. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. Hercules Tires is the official tire of the Big South Conference and for over 65 years has been providing tires with unbeatable quality at an unmatched value. Whatever the vehicle and whatever the terrain, Hercules Tires invites you to ride on our strength for a retailer, for a retailer near you. Visit HerculesTires.com. Quickly, it'll be second down for North Carolina a and t and you have to wonder, Damian, if this precipitation is going to play a role in this ball game. Well, I don't think it's going to play a role in the game plan for the Aggies. They're going to want to run the football. That time, another Tootin and Andreessen matchup for a short game for Tootin. Fowler looking to the outside, floats it that way for Warren, completes the pass, and he's ahead to the 42-yard line, and it'll bring up third. And a few. A good pick up there on second down to try to make it third and medium for the Aggies and throughout the ball game. You know, I'm a football guy and I want to see who controls the trenches, the offensive line and the defensive line. If the offensive line for the Aggies can get a push and create space and opportunity for Tootin and the freshman Wesley Graves to get yardage, they can really wear down this defensive Bryant. Both teams with big lines offensively and defensively. Fowler. In motion, the direct snap to Tootin runs off tackle, and he is ahead for a first down. So a little trickeration here early for North Carolina A&T. We saw that a bit 
last week versus South Carolina take the direct snap to Tootin. This time Tootin reads the keys, cuts off left tackle, picks up just enough to pick up the first down for the Aggies. And you know, if anything in this ball game, the Aggies are going to give it to their running backs. Got a really good staple of backs in the backfield due to North Carolina and the Aggies. Another one of those backs, Wesley Graves, has now checked into the ball game for the first time tonight. First and 10 for North Carolina A&T from the 48. The handoff goes to Graves. He's at midfield, and his forward progress is halted. Graves coming in, giving a breather. Handoff to number 35, Wesley Graves. A&T wants to pound the football. They want to run it, especially in weather conditions like tonight. Aggies are going to keep pounding it, keep pounding it, and eventually they hope to pop one. It'll bring up second and eight for North Carolina A&T. Using that twins stacked formation for the second time this evening. Fowler pump fakes. Eaves one down the sideline and just a little too long for Jakari Caldwell. And Jakari Caldwell last week. A touchdown on the second for the Aggies and had a couple of highlight catches. He lost a couple of DBs last week for the South Carolina State University Bulldogs. This time just out of his reach. And you're going to see Fowler take a couple of shots. You just want to loosen up that defense and don't be predictable versus Bryant. But again, that run game should be and would be the staple, especially in these conditions. And now another third and long situation for North Carolina A&T. Converting on just 46% of its third down opportunities. Fowler dropping back. The rush is on. Tucks it. Runs it. He's got room for a first down and more. He'll fall forward to the 37-yard line. And that's just good recognition by Jalen Fowler. Drops back solid. It's man coverage. Everybody's back's turned. No one was looking for him to run. He sees the first down marker, picks it up, and it's another huge first down for North Carolina a &T. You see here on the replay, Fowler drops back, sees the opening, a lot of green grass. And you can see there, one-on-one -on -one man coverage, backs turned, races to the first down marker, gets it for the Aggies. And how about the field crew here? I mean, it's October, and this grass looking really green still. Well, you know, we're in the south, baby, so we take <laughs> care of our lawns down here. Fowler again on the move. And Fowler on the keeper. It's not made by number 10. Fowler can provide those yards from his quarterback position it's going to make the jobs of tootin and graves that much easier as you see fowler there a little bit shaken up catching his breath after that run the aggies moving quickly tempo offense play action sails this one the catch is made over the middle by sterling burkhalter and North Carolina A&T continues to move the ball down the field. A little RPO action there from Fowler. Takes it to Tootin. Burkhart are running free. Man-to-man -man coverage. He makes the grab. Picks up another Aggie first down. The tight end, Nicholas Dobson. You see him at the bottom of your screen. Needs into the ball game. First and goal, A&T trying to go with more of a jumbo package. So first and goal from the nine. The handoff to Tootin. And he's across the five, down to the three. So a solid first down play for North Carolina. Basil Tootin on the carry. See what the Aggies want to do. You get in that red zone, give the ball to Bayshaw, Rootin, Tootin. And he makes a defender miss. You see Andreessen there again to make the stop, but not before a solid gain on first down. Oh, Wilson, partner, we said it. It's going to be the two of those guys locking up all night long. North Carolina A&T has converted eight of its ten red zone attempts this season. Six of those has have culminated in touchdowns. Second and goal. And off again to Tootin on the second opportunity. He's in. Give him six. Touchdown, Aggies. Well, you see the strength of Tootin there. Stopped on the one yard line, but second effort, that stick to it of miss to lunge into the end zone for the Aggie touchdown. Oh, Aggies. North Carolina and two. Tootin there met at the goal line. 
by two Bulldog defenders, but he would not be denied. There's the strength of Bayshaw rooting too. North Carolina A&T leads it 6 nothing, and now the Big South co-special teams player of the week, Andrew Brown, is on for the extra point. He's 8 for 8 this season. Snap is down. Hold. Kick is through. And it's 7-0 North Carolina A&T as we get set for another time. All moments made easy. That's totally Target. Wherever we come from, we all have one thing in common. We all want the incredible new iPhone 14 Pro. Now at T-Mobile. T-Mobile gives you Apple TV Plus included. So watch your favorite Apple Originals on the most advanced smartphone display ever. Get iPhone 14 Pro on us with Apple TV Plus included. Now at T-Mobile. It's going to be some growing pains. And one thing for Coach Merritt and his squad, they just want to compete. And if you compete and you lay it out on the field, you can live with the results. But like my pops used to always tell me, son, there's nothing in this world worth having is going to come easy. So it's not going to be easy. You have to adjust to that different scholarship number. And once you get a couple of recruiting classes in, things will even itself out. They certainly will as Eckhouse stops shy of the original set of sticks. So it'll bring up second and 11 for the Bulldogs. Eckhouse finished fourth in the Jerry Rice Award voting last year. Drops back, throws over the middle, and there was contact at the mesh point there. But terrific defense by North Carolina A&T as Ty Williams of Detroit, Michigan, was in there to break things up. Jihad Edmond, the tight end, was the intended receiver. The RPO action there by Eckhouse, and thought he had a man down the scene, but Ty Williams with the big hit to jar the ball from the receiver, and it's going to create a third and long situation now for Bryant. Third and 11 for North Carolina A&T. Excuse me, for Bryant. Eckhouse floats this one back over the middle again 
And it will fall incomplete as Gary Cooper had the ball sail behind him. Good protection there by Brian Eckhouse. Had a man open. Ball a bit behind, but you see the field may have played a part in that play. And now the Bulldogs are going to have to punt it and have an electrifying punt returner for the Aggies back there. Had one call back for a touchdown last week. And young Amante. So Amante Jones, who's averaging 11.6 yards per return. Jimmy O'Brien to punt this one away. Just gets it off. And it will take an A&T roll and is stopped just shy of midfield. So the Aggies will begin this drive at their own 49-yard line as we get set for another timeout. When we return, Jalen Fowler and Bashal Tootin will take the field for another drive with good field position. We're back after this on ESPN3. Get social with the Big South. Join the always growing network of Big South fans on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and more. Keep up with the latest news or interact with the league and its fans. Follow, watch, like, and share with the Big South Conference. North Carolina A&T out quickly as Romelo Kimbrough, the fullback, getting in on the action. You don't see the big fella getting the football too often, but when he does, his teammates start going crazy. Well, in order to get the fullback to block, you got to feed him the rock a couple times throughout the season, and this time he shows that, hey, not only can I block, I have a little bit of athleticism, goes airborne to pick up a big first down for North Carolina a &T. Listen, we have the Bryant Bulldogs. We have the Aggies, whose mascot is a bulldog. There are going to be some dog bones thrown around here. You got to throw the man the bone. I like that part. Now, I told you, like Snoop Dogg, say, it's a dog heat. <laughs> dog world along with the fabulous dramatics here's Tootin again across the 30 and down to the 29 Bashal Tootin refuses to go down on the first contact yeah he's a tough runner Tootin showed you all throughout the early parts of the season like hey he can handle the load give me the ball I can make people miss I can run him over I can do what I need to do to get positive yardage picks up a nice yard six yard gain on that run you think about some of the running backs that have come through North Carolina A&T over the past 10 years and Tootin continuing that legacy. RBU, they call it, as Tootin tries to get around the corner. Instead, he's tracked down from behind and yanked to the ground. And there is a flag on the play, presumably for a horse collar. Yeah, Tootin there is going to be stopped for a loss there, but horse collar by the defense... Bryant is going to give up 15 yards of field position. And if you're Bryant here, you're reeling here late in this first quarter. Aggies trying to get back. In Personal the foul. More points. Horse call attack. Defense, number nine, 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. As now you hear from Brandon McCain, he got his mic sorted out. As we'll get another look. Chris Merritt told me yesterday, he said, listen, we can't commit penalties against North Carolina A&T if we expect to win ball games. You know, Harriet's coming free off the line. Just couldn't quite catch up to Tootin without grabbing by the horse collar. And that's going to be 15 yards, and the Aggies are in business. And, Damian, I don't know if you saw, but Bashaw Tootin taking part in the uh, very popular hooded sweatshirt under the the pads and it was just dangling there for Harriet to grab. Well as a defender sometimes you're just trying to make a play and you don't really think before you do it and unfortunate there for Bryant. Graves is the motion man. Fowler fakes the run and now he is forced to tuck it and fall to the ground as that pocket collapsed awfully quickly. Looks like it was going to be a fake quarterback draw into a pass. Fowler didn't like what he saw in the secondary and Pulled that one down and just got as much as he could. You live to play another down. Move just ahead of the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second and a very, very long nine. It's a big set of downs here defensively for Bryant. You don't want to fall behind by too much early in his ballgame. This time it's Graves, and he is taken down in the backfield. 
as this Bryant defense really starting to come alive. They like to live in the backfield. Yeah, this time that TFL by the Bryant defense is just a, a gang tackle there by the Bulldogs and Graves. Nowhere to go. Tackled by a host of defenders as soon as he got the football. And here you're going to set up a third and long situation. Interesting to see offensively. This ante play it safe. You're already in field goal range. Don't put the ball in harm's way to turn it over. Take the points if you can get them. You do have one of the best field goal kickers in FCS football and Andrew Brown on your squad. And the rain has subsided for the moment. Third and ten. Fowler floats one towards the sideline. It's broken up and a flag comes out. Blake Ellis had a hand on Burkholter almost the entire time. Yeah, Ellis fighting for dear life out there. On Automatic. The it's lonely out First there. Down. There's a DB sometimes, and Burkhalter has the size over his defender. And, you know, sometimes you just got to reach out and touch someone. And 15-yard penalty on Bryant. Makes it first and goal for North Carolina A&T. And penalties again playing a huge factor in the ball game is helping the Aggies along on this drive for sure. Chris Merritt, Bryant's head coach, just continued to reiterate yesterday how important it was to not commit those types of penalties that keep drives alive for North Carolina A&T, especially on a third and long situation. So first and goal from the two. Tootin has it. And he is halted in the backfield. You don't see that too often. But Bryant came crashing in as T.J. Butler, the free safety, slashed down to make that play. And Bryant knows what A&T wants to do in this situation. They're giving a the ball to Tootin and letting him do the rest. And this time, they're up to the challenge. And you see Tootin after the play clapping. And it's like, hey, good play. We move on to the next. And, you know, again, we're going to try to pound it. To get into the end zone, we're going to try to break your will. Listen, I think anybody who's watched an ounce of film on this North Carolina a and <laughs> team knows what's about to happen. But it, and that's okay. You can continue to go to a guy like Tootin because he's that talented. Here he is again. Tootin reaches, and he's in. Give him six. Touchdown, North Carolina A&T, and a flag on the play for taunting. And Tootin this time bounces it outside, nothing doing initially. Goes off left tackle, races to that left pylon, stretches the ball out for a touchdown, but you see him celebrating after the play. Let's see what the penalty is all about. Pretty sure it's going to be for telling the Bryant sideline to... I didn't, want to spec I didn't want to speculate. I, he hit him with the Chef Curry. Told him to take a nap. Go to sleep. Nighty night. The touchdown. That's early in the ball game. After bro. the play, on sports and white conduct, offense, number 33, his first of the game, the 15-yard penalty is enforced on the kickoff. And now the last thing you want to do is get another one of those. Well, that's very important because last week versus South Carolina State, the entire Aggie team and the entire Bulldog team got penalties on sportsmanlike, and then it was a couple of a and players who picked up their second one, you know, not two or three plays later, and they were disqualified from the ball game. So if you're Bayshaw Tootin, you have to be mindful of that moving forward. Brown punches it through, no problem. And the Aggies lead it 14-0 late in the first quarter. Big time run there by Tootin. Again, the previous play, really good defense by Bryant. You stopped Tootin, but then you flexed a little bit after the stop, and it gave Tootin fuel for his fire. He gets in the zone, does get the taunting penalty. Here you see on the replay, Tootin, nice jump cut to the outside, sheds the defender. Touchdown, Aggies. And Tootin, you see here, quiet down, simmer down, young man, but too much celebration. <laughs> For Bayshaw Tootin, he gets the flag, and I'm sure the coaching staff is telling him about that on the sideline, but you'll take the touchdown nonetheless. I, I never met a coach that didn't like when his kid scored. <laughs> However, I, I know that Sam Washington has been trying to stress to his players that 
you got to just play the game and you can't worry about the other things because down the line, those are the types of penalties that could be the difference between a championship season and coming up just short. So you don't want to take the enthusiasm away from a player or the passion away from the player, but you want your, your player to be smart. Well, and you need them available. Availability is the best ability, so <laughs> I've heard. And, you know, now you have to be mindful of that if you're tooting. You can't celebrate anymore. You can't get into anybody's face. You may be disqualified from the ball game. That end over and kick shorter than usual because of the 15-yard penalty as Frederick is hip-tossed out of bounds. And He's around Frederick. the 46. And Frederick pointing to a couple of Aggies on the sideline. It's getting a little bit chippy out there in this ball game. And this is the first time these two teams have seen each other ever. They haven't played each other. But with social media and things of that nature, you know there's been some talking all week long between these two ball clubs. Well, Ishad Byram, the starting running back for Bryant, is from Charlotte, North Carolina. Graduated from Metro Line of Christian. Yeah, so he's back home, so to speak, and wants to play well in front of family and friends. But again, social media, these kids are pretty much a click away from talking trash to each other. Play action. That one tossed out. And complete to Edmund. It was Ty Williams who lowered the shoulder and was able to make the tackle. He's got two tackles tonight already. That matches his season total coming into this evening. That was a pretty good play design and looked like it was going to be a big gainer for Bryant. But Ty Williams shot out of a cannon for no gain there. Good defense there by the Aggies. Second and ten now for the Bulldogs. Eckhouse drops back, plenty of time, steps up, throws, and that one is dropped by Ruggieri. Yeah, Ruggieri, leading receiver coming into this ball game for Bryant, 272 on the season. No touchdowns, but 22 receptions. He's going to want that one back. I think he heard footsteps on that one and dropped that pass. At the end of the first quarter, North Carolina A&T leading Bryant 14-0. First game of the Big South football season. Back with you here in Greensboro. The whistle blew before the ball came out. So Joseph Stuckey with the stop, and it'll bring up fourth down. Nine to go, and the punt unit is on for Bryant. That play looked promising as well, but Stuckey, again, reading his keys coming up to make that play and forcing a punt from Bryant. Best the Bulldogs can hope for is trying to pin the Aggies deep and flip the field position. So Jimmy O'Brien on to punt this one away. Monte Jones is back deep. And this one will roll out of bounds right around the 19-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for North Carolina A&T. The Aggies so far on the night, 113 yards on 21 plays. 56 of those yards are on the ground, 57 through the air, and that partner is as balanced as you can pretty much be. That's like a stick of deodorant. Very balanced. And the Aggies, if they can do that game in, game out, they're going to put themselves in position to win a lot of ball games this season. And, you know, coming into this game, of course, Brian understood we have to stop the run. But if the Aggies can throw the ball and especially stretch it down the field, they're going to create problems for a lot of teams in the Big South. So Fowler will run the offense. Play action. And this one falls just short. And check that. Zach Yeager has just come into the game. You thought that Yeager may be out in this ball game. Checks in and immediately Yeager bomb and could not connect with this wide receiver. And, you know, that's 
surprising to say the least. All indications earlier in the week were that he was out. <laughs> what did Gomer Powell say? Surprise, surprise, surprise. So here's Jaeger. The handoff. And Tootin gets dragged down by his shoelace, and we have a flag in the backfield. That was a Andreessen ankle tackle away from being a huge game for Tootin. There aren't too many people who are going to be able to run away from Joe Andreessen. Definitely a magnet for the football. And, you know, you don't get conference defensive player of the week two weeks straight. Hold it. Offense, number 63. The penalty is half the distance. Second down. It'll be a hold on Ricky Lee, the third, the preseason first team all Big South selection who transferred from North Carolina Central. And Ricky Lee last week. It's a catalyst in that run game for the Aggies. And, you know, sometimes those big guys up front, you know, officials let you do a little bit of grabbing, but got to let go at some point. And this is defensively what Bryant wants, try to create some pressure on a and Jaeger drops it off short. That pass is completed and brought down relatively quickly is Graves. And the screen pass to Graves. Andreessen, like a bulldog that he is, sniffs it out, makes a play, and this guy is just a tackling machine for the Bryant Bulldogs. Brings up third down and long for the Aggies. It'll bring up third and 17 for North Carolina a and &T. Andreessen with six tackles already on the evening. And well on his way to another double-digit tackle performance. He's had at least ten in each of the first four games this season. Jaeger over the middle. That one completed. And shoved out of bounds. Was Tootin. There you see Tootin. Not only can he run it, he can catch it. And very close to the first down, but you see who is there to make the play at the end to prevent it. Andreessen again to force an Aggie punt. That matchup is going to continue to be a fun one to watch as this game progresses. I mean, those two, uh, that's some serious football talent out on the field. Yeah, Andreessen again, the quarterback of the defense, Sideline to sideline defender at his linebacker position. Stop tooting there from picking up that first down. Brickhouse gets this one away. Fair catch signal for and secured. Fair catch signal. There's going to be good field position here for Bryant. Defense did their job after that holding penalty did not allow a first down for a &T and We'll take a timeout. As North Carolina A&T leads at 14 nothing here on ESPN. Target. Heavy Eckhouse back on to lead the Bulldog offense. Floats this one downfield, completes the pass to Frederick, and the Bulldogs are across midfield. A good starting field position to begin this drive for Bryant. And you see there Eckhouse all day to throw. Wide open receiver down the field. 
Bryant picks up a big first down. And if you're the Bulldogs, now is your opportunity to put a drive together, to put some points on the board, to put game pressure on North Carolina A&T. Before that pass, just six yards through the air for the Bulldogs. As Fabrice McKendy is brought down to the ground after a gain of a couple. Jacob Roberts, another stud linebacker in the Big South coming up with that stop. And it's one thing that South Carolina State could not do versus North Carolina a and last week was run the football. Bryant, not, a, not known as a great running team, is going to have to keep the Aggies defense honest. Well, it's tough for most opponents to run the football against North Carolina a and A&T has held opponents under 80 yards rushing under Sam Washington 56 times so far in his tenure with the Aggies as both the defensive coordinator and then the head coach. 70 times under 100 yards rushing. Yeah, Aggies, when you're led by a defensive minded coach at the head coaching position of course your defense is going to be really good and you know old school coach like coach washington number one thing on defense stop the run you know if you stop the run you control the line of scrimmage you can control the ball game big third down here though for bryant offensively and what's funny is he was the guy charged with trying to stop jerry rice in practice at mississippi valley state back in the day and that should be enough for a first down for the bulldogs so if you get to practice against a future Hall of Famer, I guess you figure out what works and what doesn't pretty quickly. Yeah, definitely. And on Bryant's first test on third and short, they were able to pick up that first down. That's a good sign for Bryant knowing that, hey, if we get in short yarded situation, we can lean on our run game to pick up the first. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from the 35. Eckhouse will change the play. Keeps it on the ground. And that one broken up quickly. As Jermaine McDaniel off the edge, coming back from an injury and making his first appearance of the 2022 campaign. Zevi Eckhouse made a check at the line. He may have wanted to keep the original play because McDaniel, free rusher off the line. Perfect defense for that call. And you see just shooting off the line of scrimmage. Jermaine McDaniel, he says, I'm hungry. Feed me, Seymour. Second and 13. Eckhouse fires this one. It is complete to Rajiri, and he's able to scamper ahead for another first down as this Bryant Bulldog air attack starting to pick up steam. Best looking drive of the ball game for sure for Bryant. Just too much space in the middle of the Aggie defense there for Eckhouse, and you give him time, he'll pick you apart. First and 10 from the 24. McKendy. He's able to get across the 20. And that's where his legs are cut out from under him. It'll bring up second and six. It's a pretty good game, though. And the run attack for Bryant. And again, going to run it just enough to keep that defense honest. You don't want the D-line of North Carolina a and teeing off on Eckhouse all game long, but you know what Bryant wants to do. They want to pass the football. Eckhouse ranks first in the Big South in passing yards per game, averaging 263.75 through the air a night. Play action. Floats this one to the opposite sideline. It's complete, and he's in. Fabrice McKendy. For the touchdown, but there's a flag on the play. That was a nice play design. Play action fake to the running back. Runs him out on the sideline route, but it's coming back, holding on Bryant. Circle that flag, circle that play. Let's see if it comes back to bite Bryant at the end of this ball game. That would have been a good momentum shift. Before Bryant had that touchdown stood. As we Here get another see, look. Play action fake by Eckhouse. 
to McKendy. Makes a good catch. Breaks the tackle, gets in the zone, but all for naught. As that touchdown comes back on the holding penalty. It'll be second and 15. Free play. Eckhaus launches it for the end zone. And it'll fall incomplete as McDaniel jumped off sides. Eckhaus does what any good signal caller does when you get a free play. You go up top and Amir McNeil right there in coverage for the Aggies, but five yards giving back to Bryant on the offsides. You know Jermaine McDaniel is awfully eager to try and make up for lost time coming back from this injury. The App State transfer has been an absolute monster for North Carolina A&T when he's on the field. In 2020, before the pandemic canceled the football season, he was a Hero Sports preseason All-American. And once you get back on the field after facing adversity through injury, you understand how important the game is to you. And, you know, let's wish that young man and all those guys on the field good health. Eckhouse to the corner. And there was a miscommunication out on the field. It looked like Derek Eugene was the intended receiver, the transfer from LIU, the squad that Brian actually beat last week, former NEC foe for the Bulldogs. And what a game it was last week for Bryant. A 31-29 win. Ethan Getman hit a 37-yard field goal as time expired to just take that weight off the shoulder of the Bulldogs, clinch that first W, and now head into conference play. Yeah, both squads got their first wins last week, and they were coming into this ball game with a bit of momentum trying to build even more. This is a big third down here for Bryant. Third and long. Eckhouse, deep drop, screen. He's got Byram, and he's taken down shy of the first down marker. And it should be field goal range for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Byram looked like he could have got to that first down marker, but Tyquan King out of nowhere flashing that speed from his linebacker position. Stops him about four yards short. And Bryant going to at least put the impression that they're going to go for it here on fourth down. This is a big play here. As of now, the Bulldogs going for it. Fourth and four from the 18. And the Bulldogs jumped. The players didn't hear the whistle there. Left tackle, I think, for Bryant. Happy feet on the outside. Andrew Burkery. That is a costly five yards. In my mind, that probably changes the situation completely. As you see now, the field goal team coming on. And I guess the same thing in Chris Merritt's mind as well. Yeah, Bryant fully prepared to go for it there on fourth. Merritt's going to roll the dice, but you back up five yards on the false start, and now they're just going to try to get points on the board. Don't want to squander the best drive of the ball game. So it'll be a 40-yard attempt. Movement along the front. And we have a whistle. We'll see who jumped first. Both coaches talking about penalties, pre-snap penalties. At that, this is offsides here now. And now the offense, offense is coming back on. The Aggies. Back and forth we go. Offsides now giving Bryant's offense another shot. Now they're going to go for it. Field goals probably won't win this ball game for the Bulldogs. They feel like we got to get into the end zone and extend this drive. This has by far been the best drive for the Bryant Bulldog offense on the evening. A good field position to begin the drive, and now they're knocking on the door. And now we have a whistle and a timeout taken by the Bulldogs. It'll be the first timeout taken by either squad, and we'll go ahead and take it with them when we return a crucial fourth down here in Greensboro. Back after this on ESPN3.
hard work, a love for the game is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. 6,000 universities. Why choose North Carolina a and We graduate more African-American students in engineering, journalism, liberal arts, and agriculture than any other campus anywhere, period. Our grads earn more right out of school than all but one other UNC system peer. And 96% of Aggie alums say they wish they can do it all over again. Can you feel the pride? <laughs> You will. a and Always doing, never done. Musco Lighting. We make it happen. Fourth and four from the 18-yard line. Zevi Eckhaus will get a new play call from the sideline. 7-13 to go here in the second quarter. Cooper, the motion man. Eckhaus drops back, pressure on, throws, and it's incomplete. The pass was a little too low. And Cooper could not corral it. Play was there to be made. Better pass by Eckhouse. Would have been a first down for Bryant instead. They turn it over on downs and their on best the drive results in zero points for the Bulldogs. And again, circle that scenario at games in and we'll see if that was a major, major turning point in the ball game. We'll take a timeout. North Carolina A&T still on top, 14-0. We're back after this. North Carolina A&T takes over after the fourth down stop as the Aggies lead it 14-0 here in Greensboro, the Big South opener for both squads. The first Big South football game for the Bryant Bulldogs. Direct snap to Tootin. Plows his way ahead across the 25 and he's tripped up at around the 28. My goodness, he just ran over two defenders for the Bulldogs. You're going to see that a couple of times throughout the ball game. Tootin direct snap just gives him an opportunity to get the balls, to get the ball in his hands, and you know he makes a small cut in the between the tackle and the guard, and he's just off for a first down. He's an incredible running back. 
So Jaeger still in as the quarterback. Tooting the motion man. Jaeger finds Burkhalter. And he gets absolutely belted by Jack Daly. Aggie's trying to run a little smoke screen there to Burkhalter. Nothing doing. A host of Bryant Bulldog defenders out there. Two yard loss. And again, Jaeger still in the ballgame. Interesting that Jaeger, we thought that he was going to be out. Now he. He's in the game. He is the quarterback for North Carolina AT. I guess he's okay. Apparently. But I gotta tell you, Sterling Burkhalter probably not thrilled. He just got hit by the 6'4, 315 pound Jack Daly. You don't see that as a wide receiver too often. Jaeger on the move. Looking back the other way. Instead, tucks it, runs it, and he is taken down. There is a flag on the play, though. That was gonna be a throwback. For the Aggies, Jaeger didn't like what he saw over there. It looked like Tootin. Ken, sorry, Damian. It looked like Kenny Dyson and Romello Kimbrough got tied up. And let's see what this penalty. Yep, and it'll be a hold on Kimbrough. Yeah, Kimbrough blocking there after Jaeger took off with the ball. Play was supposed to go to the opposite side of the field, but when Jaeger pulled it. Created that holding penalty. He's going to back the Aggies up. Actually, that penalty is going to be declined by Bryant. Pretty confident call there in their defense. Bryant's defense played these last couple of series pretty well. So it'll bring up third and nine from the 29. Jaeger throws this one under pressure. And it is intercepted by Lake Ellis. Was he able to get a foot in bounds? He was not. Yeah, Jaeger going up top. Let's take Jameson another look. Warren trying to go up top to Jameson Warren. Some really good defense on the outside. And defender looked like the wide receiver there. And his foot was just beyond the out-of-bounds marker. Great call by the officiating crew. And it brings up fourth down. Yeah, the Zebras get it right from time to time. Good defense again on that series by Bryant. That one almost blocked. And the Bulldogs going to rush this one ahead. Quickly met by a pack of Aggies. Kiddos. On the return, stop made by number eight, Joseph Stuckey. And it's going to be another series with really good field position for Bryant. And, you know, offensively, they were able to move the football on that last drive, just stalled on fourth and four. But the Bulldogs have been able to string along consecutive first downs, and they got to have some confidence coming into this drive that they can move the football on the Aggies. Five minutes to play in the half. Two timeouts remaining for Bryant. First and 10 from their own 46. Eckhouse will hand this one off. And Byram is bottled up. And nowhere for a shot Byram to run. Getting a stout Aggie defensive line. Not giving a bunch of space for Byron to work. For the Bulldogs. It'll bring up second and nine from the 47. And Byron coming off a 100-yard effort versus Long Island, so you know he had confidence coming into this ballgame. Ruggieri is the slot man in the trips. This one goes to the opposite side, and Edmund is able to come down with it. It counts as complete. There you see a matchup that Eckhouse liked. Tight end on linebacker. Edmund able to come down with that reception. You see Eckhouse here. You know, what Bryant wants to do. Beautiful pass there. Two feet down on the reception. And again, Bulldogs are in business. They've been moving the football their last couple of drives. Henry Daniel not known as a coverage guy. This one floated out to Byram. 
He's met by three Aggies and planted down. Jacob Roberts from Charlotte. Two Queen City guys there linking up. I know those guys are familiar with each other from their days in Charlotte. And Roberts, again, one of the better defenders in the Big South Conference. Another sideline to sideline linebacker type makes the play for the Aggies. Second and seven from the 35-yard line for the Bulldogs working out of the pistol. Keep an eye on Landon Ruggieri at the bottom of your screen. Ruggieri makes the grab at the 25, and that'll be good for another Bulldog first down. You just had a feeling the ball was going to him on that one. Well, nothing fancy there. Just Ruggieri found a spot in that Aggie defense, sat down and made himself presentable for Eckhouse, and he finds him for a big Bulldog first down. Again, Bryant driving, trying to get into the red zone. You can tell Eckhouse finally starting to feel comfortable out on the field. And talking with head coach Chris Merritt earlier today, uh, the Bulldogs don't really play on natural grass all that often as Frederick able to gain another first down. And one thing that I've seen on film with Bryant, and especially in this ball game, they understand that, hey, we got to get the ball out of Eckhouse's hand quickly. It's one, two strap drops and bam the balls out of his hands they don't want to give that Aggie defense line an opportunity to rack up sacks first and goal for the Bulldogs well coach Merritt said to us that team speed was going to be one of the biggest differences between the NEC and the Big South this is a much faster conference you're talking about teams that recruit North Carolina South Carolina Georgia Florida some real deal athletes. You say it's a lot of speed down south, partner, but what you can combat that with is execution. And right now in this drive, Eckhouse to the corner, and Ruggieri can't come away with it. Yeah, Bryant executing on this drive, trying to combat the speed of the Aggies. Better execution. Almost had a huge touchdown grab there for Ruggieri, just out of his outreach hands. So second and goal from the nine. Ruggieri going to come off for a breather. And this is going to be a big set of downs here leading into the half. Bryant trying to get on the board right before the break. And remember, they get the ball to start the second half. Frederick off the field as well. The handoff goes to Clark. And he's able to gain maybe a yard. Ryan Clark, who had three touchdowns on the ground in the game against LIU, became the first Bulldog to run for three scores in a single game since 2014. But how about this one, Damian? He was actually the quarterback of this team in the COVID-shortened spring 2021 season. Yeah, interesting story. And Clark is their bigger back for Bryant and again those three rushing touchdowns huge in the win last week over Long Island for Bryant he comes in and he's trying to break that scoring seal for the Bryant Bulldogs third and goal from the nine Frederick checks back into the game he's all the way at the bottom of your screen Eckhouse floats this one complete to Clark and it is short of the goal line. It'll bring up fourth and goal from the five. And it looks like Chris Merritt wants to make sure he puts some points on the board here before heading into the locker room. So the field goal team is going to trot on to the gridiron. Quick hitter there from Eckhouse to Ryan Clark. And Clark not able to get in the zone. And again, you mentioned Coach Merritt. Got to put points on the board here. You don't want to come away with nothing, especially when you get the ball to start the second half. Ethan Getman, who's three for three on the season, hit the game winner last week. And that one is up and through. And the Bulldogs erase the goose egg from the scoreboard and make it 14 to three with 36 seconds to go in the second quarter. A solid drive there for the Bulldogs. You can tell that they're starting to get comfortable. The Aggies on top, 14 to three. We're
Welcome back out to Truist Stadium here in Greensboro. The Bulldogs on the board for the first time this evening, trailing 14 to 3. And they'll go with the little fake out and presumably now boot this one deep. So Ethan Getman will send this one away. It is fielded by Tamon Cook. Shrugs off the first tackle, able to reach ahead for the 20, and that's where the Aggies will begin the drive. Only so, 30 seconds left here, partner. Yeah, you know, Damien, I, I, I don't know. Do you just go ahead and take a knee and just run out the Yeah, Aggies may clock? take this one into the, the locker room. You got a 14-3 lead. You don't want to put the ball in harm's way to give – Brian, an opportunity to put more points on the board before the half. Especially because the Bulldogs actually received the ball in the second half. The Aggies received the opening kickoff, so Bryant will go ahead and get the football. Jalen Fowler is back out on the field. I don't know what is going on with the quarterback situation at the Aggies, but it's a blessing to have more than one guy who can run the show. You ask any head coach, you like to have more than none. I mean, to be able to win a ball game with four different guys last week is pretty impressive. Here's Tootin. He'll jet towards the sideline and stop the clock around the 37-yard line. Well, that's a pretty big gain on a draw play from Bashaw Tootin. And what sprung him was that stiff arm on Andreessen. And that makes it interesting. Now you take a couple of shots. And you have three timeouts. Down the middle of the field, you know, possibly getting to field goal range. You got a kicker with a big leg. For the Aggies, Andrew Brown's long, 49 on the season. He's 7 of 8 on the campaign. So first and 10. Fowler almost has that one intercepted. Well, that one was miscommunication. Tootin not looking for the pass. He was looking to block Andreessen. Andreessen was trying to tackle Tootin. He came up, and he, had he... Been aware that that was a pass. He could have picked that one off. And that may change the thought process of the coaching staff for a and dodged a bullet there. Would have been a big turnover, though, for Bryant. Let's see what the Aggies do here again. Take a couple of shots down the field. You possibly can get into field goal range. Hadn't really tested the middle of the field thus far. Here's Fowler looking. Down the sideline, and that one is picked off. J.T. Anderson with his first interception of the season. And that's exactly what you didn't want to happen if you're North Carolina a and You see Fowler just makes his mind up. He's going up top. Ball slightly underthrown. Three Bulldog defenders in the vicinity and had... Burkhalter came down with that. That would have been an incredible catch. But an interception, the first of the season, like you mentioned, partner. JT Anderson. Bulldogs now. 12 seconds to see if they can possibly get into field goal range. 12 seconds. And, and timeouts are an eternity in football. Two timeouts remaining. That's the fifth pass intercepted by the Bulldog defense this year. And we'll see what Chris Merrick decides to do. He also calls the offense, in addition to being the head man. Eckhouse scouring, throws. That one is complete. Timeout called. Gary Cooper able to haul it in. Played his first two seasons at Indiana. Was one of the kids who actually played high school football for Chris Merrick. So he went to Merritt's alma mater, IU, played for Merritt at Columbus High School in Miami, and now decides, you know what, I'm going to finish out my college career for my high school coach. These are two men who can't quit each other, apparently. <laughs> and it's good for the Bryant Bulldogs, and Coach Merritt, a lot of success in the state of Florida in high school football, able to recruit his state, able to bring in talent to Bryant University. And you, know, you mentioned the scholarship differential moving up from the NEC to the Big South and 
You know, it's going to take a couple of recruiting cycles, but Coach Merritt, the administration there at Bryant, believes that he's the man for the job. He's got three of his high school players on his team right now. <laughs> yeah, that's players that love their coach. And, and that's a testament to the type of coach he is. Eckhouse heaves this one down the sideline. Frederick, the intended receiver, and it's intercepted. KP on the pick. Karan Prunty, the Kansas transfer out of Portsmouth, Virginia, will send the Aggies to the locker room, leading 14 to 3. We'll take a timeout. The Jersey Mike's halftime report coming up next. Uh Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 
Welcome back inside the broadcast booth here at Truist Stadium. Spencer Turkin alongside my partner, Damian Banks. North Carolina A&T able to rush out to a 14-0 lead. Allowed a field goal from Bryant late there in the first half. And that's where we sit right now at 14-3. Damian, it seemed like the running game for the Aggies was working early. Bryant, though, that air attack really started to get comfortable there late in the, sec in the second quarter. Well, I think the first half went about how we expected it. Bryant Bulldogs really couldn't run the football versus a ts defense. Conversely, a t able to run the ball on Bryant's defense. But Zevi got cooking there in the second quarter, able to hook up with a couple of receivers, get some points on the board, and take some momentum into the break for Bryant. Now, we've seen some penalties on both sides that have cost both teams uh, some situational yardage and maybe Bryant a little bit more there, especially deep in that offensive zone. You had a chance to go for it on fourth down. Uh, you go ahead, you get a false start penalty, you get backed up, and then a t gives Bryant the ball right back into a, another fourth and short situation with an off sides penalty and so both teams have a little bit more to clean up but after that and for the most part it, it was a solid half of big south football yeah not a perfect half by any means for either squad defensively again a t you know what to expect with a t they want to stop the run force you to throw the football but bryant wants to throw the football again eckhaus got cooking a little bit there in that second quarter let's see if he can carry that over to the second half and also let's see if bryant can stop the run game of a t right now Rootin' tootin' Bayshaw is doing his thing. The other thing that's really something that we should be keeping an eye on is which quarterback is North Carolina A&T going to go with here in the third and fourth quarters. You saw Jalen Fowler. He started the game. He finished the first half. Zach Yeager, though, was in for a significant amount of time there in that first half. And he looked a little productive. Well, I think the coaching staff at A&T just wants to keep Bryant on their toes. We had no indication that Jaeger will be playing in his ball game. Inserts Jaeger into the ball game. Keeps you on your toes a bit defensively if you're Bryant. Be interesting to see who comes out to play quarterback for North Carolina A&T in the second half. Let's go ahead and get a look at some of the first half highlights here on the Jersey Mike's halftime report. Deshaul Tootin got it going early. First point of contact, didn't matter. He was in to the end zone. He just continues to show off that strength. Yeah, Bayshaw, tugboat, tooting, stopped initially, but then he stretches that ball over the end zone for the first touchdown for the Aggies. Andrew Brown with the extra point. He's been phenomenal this season. The Big South Co. Special Teams Player of the Week after last week. Jalen Fowler getting it done with his legs as well. And then he gives the ball back to Tootin, who races for the pylon, shrugs off the defender. You see Tootin again, shows that agility and shows a burst getting into the zone for North Carolina a and And there defensively, linebacking core of the Aggies. Just a lot of speed defensively for a t really stopping Bryant from being able to run the football. Jermaine McDaniel back in the fold after missing the first four games. You see... Fowler trying to go up top right before the half to make something happen. Just better defense by the Bulldogs to give themselves a shot maybe at more points before the half. Beautiful, beautiful interception there JT by Anderson. the Bulldogs and by JT Anderson. And then you saw Zevi Eckhouse air it out to try and earn some points late in the first half, but Karan Prunty was there to pick it off and send both teams to the locker room. Yeah, Pronti says whatever. Pronti says whatever you can do, I can do. Let's go into the locker room, regroup, make some adjustments, and come out for the second half. 14 to 3 is where we stand as we get set for the third quarter of action. When we return, Bryant, North Carolina AT. The opening night will continue right here on ESPN3. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. 
Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Back with you here at Truist Stadium. 14-3, North Carolina A&T leading Bryant. 30 minutes to go. As we make our way through opening night of conference play in the Big South, the first time that the Bryant Bulldogs working as members of the Big South for football. The rest of their squads operating in the America East after transitioning from the NEC. There you see inside linebackers coach for North Carolina a t Thomas Howard. Knowing that the Aggies are going to go on defense to start the second half trying to get his troops riled up. Had a chance to talk to Coach Howard coming into the ball game. He was really excited about the opportunity this evening. Anthony Frederick on the return. He's across the 35, reaches midfield, and he's finally brought down in Aggie territory. Anthony Frederick, who's been absolutely fantastic this season, returning the football, averaging 32 yards per return, gives Bryant some spectacular field position to begin the second half. You see the speed of Frederick there, clean through the initial wave of the coverage team and sets up the Bulldogs again. The last three drives for Bryant, great field position. You see again, he's getting through that initial wave, not touched, big hole. And there you see it's a foot race. Aggies do well to keep him short of scoring that touchdown. So Zevi Eckhouse on for the first time here in the second half. Play action, that one batted up. And it is almost picked off. Instead, it is marked incomplete. Tip trail there on defense. Almost an interception there for Varian Cole, but he ran into his teammate. Let's see who got the hands on it. The hand might have been Jermaine McDaniel. Yeah, I couldn't McDaniel. tell, though. If not, it might have been Joseph Stuckey. Either McDaniel or Stuckey got their hand on that one. Cole had an opportunity for that tip drill interception. Just runs into his own teammate. Second and ten. Eckhouse steps up in the pocket. Throws that one incomplete. Eckhouse's pass falls incomplete. You can't throw a better pass there. A.C. White had it right on his hands. The transfer from ODU and couldn't haul it in. That would have been a big play there for White and not only in yardage but to get confidence from your quarterback knowing that you know, I can go to you in a tough spot. That would have been a nice play for AC but on a rather chilly night here in Greensboro he's not able to come away with that grab. The rain finally cleared out of the area. It started to come down there in the first quarter. Here's Eckhouse. Fires. That one complete to Ruggieri. And that'll be good for a Bulldog first down. So Bryant able to convert on third down coming into this game. The Bulldogs were ninth in FCS in third down efficiency. 53%. But Coach Merritt told me that 55% is his goal on third down efficiency. So lofty expectations on third down when things really are toughest. 53% is sensational, as Future would say, but Coach Merritt wants it to, to be even higher. That was just a great grab by Ruggieri there. Eckhouse, the pump fake, the throw, and Frederick got led out of bounds. And so that one is incomplete. Amir McDaniel just playing the sideline. They're using the sideline as an extra defender. Great coverage there by the Aggie DB. That's what you have to do. You know you're going to get a lot of pass attempts from Zevi Eckhaus. You got to win more than you lose. As a DB, you got to have a short memory. You're going to give up some catches. But you got to come back ready to play the next play. Here's the handoff. 
One of the better runs of the ball game there for Bryant. Nice shot, Byram, the Charlotte native, able to gain a few. It'll be a gain of five. It'll bring up third and five. Aggie Nation. Bryant only had seven it's yards there on the ground in the first half. They didn't abandon the run there in the first half. But Zeddy Eckhaus started to you know, cook and complete some passes there late in that second quarter. Here's a big third down for the Bulldogs. Eckhaus. Over the middle, completes his pass to his slashing target. It was Matt Prochaska. Yeah, that was just a beautiful route there by Prochaska. Matthew Prochaska. Got the inside on the defender. Pinpoint accuracy on the pass from Eckhaus to pick up the first down. This is an important drive here for Bryant. They got comfortable there late in that second quarter. Got those three points on the board here, driving for more. So first and 10. From the 15. The handoff goes to Byram. He rounds the corner and is into the end zone. There you see the speed of Byram. You know, the first time he gets a bit of daylight where he can showcase those wheels. Beats the Aggie defense to the zone for a Bulldog touchdown. Bryant University. Now we have a ball game partner here. You see pulling guard, pulling play there for Byram. He sees daylight, and you're not going to catch that young man. Touchdown, Bryant, and now we have ourselves a ball game. The North Carolina native with his third touchdown of the season. And this kick is good. And it's 14 to 10. With 12-21 left remaining in the third quarter, your score, your Bulldogs in this ball game. You know, that's going to force game stress for North Carolina a &T. You want to put your opponent under game stress. And, and it seemed like up until... You know, midway through that second quarter, a &T was pretty comfortable out there on the field. Bryant hadn't really tested them. Now, a &T still with the lead, but Bryant showing life. Bulldogs really forcing that game stress for North Carolina a &T. Let's see how they respond offensively. It was a seven-play, 44-yard drive in two minutes and 29 seconds. And the touchdown will go to the Charlotte, North Carolina native, Ishad Byram. It started with... Great field position on the kick return. You see the replay here. Just pulling guard. How about the offensive line there? Michael Watts just pulling, clearing out space. Touchdown easy there for Byram. And that's a Bulldog touchdown that was much needed. You open up that third quarter initial drive having tremendous success. And now that could spill over to your defense. Getman boots this one away. And the Aggies are going to elect to take this thing out. Here's Cook. Tamon Cook ahead past the 25 to the 26. And so A&T will begin its first drive from scrimmage here in half number two from its own 26. See who comes out to play quarterback here for the Aggies. Looks like Jaeger. Zach Jaeger, we mentioned in the first half, not expected to play in this ball game, dealing with some issues physically after that South Carolina State game. Didn't finish that game at quarterback for ANT, but he's in as the signal caller now for the Aggies. The handoff to Tootin. He crosses the 30 and is planted down. And Tootin met in the hole, but again, six-yard gain there for Tootin. Five-yard gain, and I think that the Aggies, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're going to lean on that run game, make Bryant stack the box. 
to stop it, and then we could take advantage through the air the Bulldogs secondary. Jaeger, RPO, gets tracked down from behind and is taken down by Chidi Na. Outstanding defense there by the Bryant Bulldogs. Jaeger, nowhere to go with it, just tucks it and tries to get as much as he can. And Chidi Na right there showing the athleticism from his nose tackle position. You see RPO action. Jaeger wants to fling it out to the flats, but nowhere to go with it. There you see the athleticism by nose tackle, Chidi Na. And that strength, he had him just by his fingertips and ripped him down. Jaeger switches direction. And he's met by a pack of dogs and brought down. That looked like that was gonna be a shovel pass there. Jaeger again didn't like what he saw, tucked it and there. You see how the offense from Bryant created momentum for the defense and they get a three and out. So now they, Bryant's gonna get the ball back and with a dangerous, dangerous returner back there, try to get good field position and put another drive together and retake the lead. It'll put a four in the box and Caleb Brickhouse is on to kick this one away. Cole Lakatos will field it. Takes it at his own 15, ahead to the 20, and is tripped up at the 23-yard line. Good coverage there on the punt unit by the Aggies to limit that return game. 14 to 10, we've got a ball game in Greensboro. We're back after this on ESPN3. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. The B1 Performance Patch elevates physical functions by transforming carbs into glucose used to fuel the body. Don't compete without it. Visit buyb1.com or on social media at B1 Patch. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Welcome back out to Truist Stadium. A&T holding on to a four-point lead, but all of the momentum in the stadium right now on that Bryant sideline as Ruggieri makes this first down catch at the 38-yard line, and he's wrapped up and brought down. But Zevi Eckhouse in the groove. The RPO action there by Eckhouse to find Landon Ruggieri, and it's just a lot of space out there on the outsides, giving a lot of respect to those wideouts for Bryant and no pressure on Eckhouse. He's able to complete that pass for a first down. So first and 10 from the 38. 
At Cal's two-step drop, flings it towards the outside, complete to Eugene, still on his feet, and he is ahead to the 40 seven yard line and the thing about it is Eckhouse is just taking what the Aggie defense is giving them just a lot of space on the outside there by a t defensively and you know I'm not sure if a t is making gonna make that adjustment hey like hey we might want to press up a little bit on these wide outs if not Eckhouse is just going to take what the defense gives you and and mosey on down the field the other thing that Eckhouse has had is time time to survey and he is a patient quarterback, especially for a sophomore. Play action. Lofts this one down the seam. And it's complete to Ruggieri. He's to the three and dragged down. Landon Ruggieri, the junior, hauls it in. What a play there by Ed Calson Ruggieri. RPO play action pass, and he just sneaks behind the defender. Ty Williams playing catch up. Perfect pass. Nice catch there by Ruggieri and a touchdown saving tackle by Williams. Aggies reeling on defense. First and goal officially from the two. Wow. That was a heck of a play call there by the Bulldogs. And Cows from the gun. Quarterback keeper still fighting, and he'll reach and is taken down in the backfield. Stop made by number 20. You see King finishing things up there on Eckhouse. Don't see a lot of running out of Eckhouse. They're trying to fool the defense of North Carolina A&T, but Bryant in great position here to take the lead. Ryan Clark in as the running back now. He is the red zone package back. Shovel pass. And that one falls short. It's a nice play there by Prunty. Saw that from his cornerback position and flashed his speed to come up with a touchdown saving tackle there. Nicholas Rasselman was the tight end who came away with that football. And quickly, it's third and goal. Third down. From in between the three and the four. A yeah, big third down here. Wonder if it's two down territory. A field goal doesn't give you the lead. So if you don't score here, you look for Bryant and probably go for it on fourth. Quarterback keeper, Eckhouse is taken down. That front four for North Carolina A&T penetrated as soon as the ball was snapped. And two runs on this drive in the red zone by Eckhouse and not known as a, a runner by trade. Interesting there. And you see there Ty Williams. Williams trying to make up for getting beat on that deep ball by Ruggieri. Stops Eckhouse midair for the Aggies. Getman, who's one for one today, was the co-special teams player of the week in the conference. Sharing the honors with Andrew Brown is on for the chip shot. And he punches it through with ease. So we've got a one-point ball game here in Greensboro. 6.41 to go. Bryant down by one. We're back after this on ESPN3. Affected by Hurricane Ian, donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross prepare for, respond to, and help people recover from this disaster. 14 to 13. North Carolina AT leads it. Bryant, though, has scored 13 unanswered points. 
A big drive here offensively for the Aggies. Been stalled as of late on the offensive side of the ball. And North Carolina A&T going to return this one. It's Jones. And he's ahead past the 25, taken down at the 27. And North Carolina A&T with Jalen Fowler now as the signal caller will go ahead and trot out onto the field. How do you go ahead and claim that momentum back? Claiming that momentum back for North Carolina a is going to start up front. You see that O-line trotting out on the field. Get those big bodies moving forward, leaning on Bryant's defensive line and establish that run game again. You got one of the better runners in the Big South, if not the best running, running back in the Big South. You got to lean on that run game here to get you this momentum back. So the redshirt senior, Jalen Fowler, now working out of the pistol. Hands it off to Tootin. And he'll push his way forward across the 30 to the 32-yard line. I mean, that's not sexy, but that's effective. If you're the Aggies, that's a you know, five-yard gain on first down. You know, you pick up five yards two times in a row, you get a first down. You don't have to be, you know, an explosive offense to score points you just have to dominate in what you do best ball start offense number 63 those five yard penalties that coach Second Sam Washington down. talked about prior to the ball game and after last week's ball game you know, that's something where, hey, you got five yards on first down and you, you give it right back. Yeah, that's the second false start on Ricky Lee tonight. And Ricky Lee, one of the leaders on that offensive line for the Aggies. So it backs A&T up to the original set of sticks, second and ten. Miscommunication in the backfield. Fowler is taken down. Offensively, Aggies just out of sorts right now. Ben Silver, the Jersey City, New Jersey native, in there to drag him down to the grass. And this time, Fowler, you mentioned miscommunication in the backfield. When you're rotating quarterbacks, you know, things like that may happen. It's going to set up a big third down here for A&T. A little forward progress was awarded, maybe a quarter of a yard there. Makes it third and a long, long nine. Fowler dropping back, has some time. Pocket collapses and he's sacked. Ben Silver on back-to-back -back plays there for the meeting at the quarterback. And Fowler initially had time, just couldn't find anyone downfield and ends up taking the sack and, you know, old Mo, all the momentum right now on the side of Bryant here. You see Fowler looking downfield, looking for someone to throw the ball to ultimately takes the sack and what a play there by Powell for Bryant and again Bulldogs stepping up on the defensive side of the football Lakatos mishandles it and a and comes up with the football and that is the medicine that a and needed we talked about it be special on special teams that's one Jacob Roberts, the and leader of this defense, that's what happens when comes you have, away with it. You know, one of your best defensive players on special teams, punt, not handled by Brian initially. Long snapper for the Aggies, had an opportunity, ready, had a chance to fall on that one. He doesn't get it, but Roberts, opportunistic to say the least. How about the freshman, Bryson Ruddy? Yeah. Down there, quickly. I always find that amazing how a long snapper can snap the ball and be the first one down the field. That's just want to. And he didn't get the, the botched punt, but he was able to create an opportunity for his teammate. And now a and in business, and they needed that one in the worst way. Fowler will remain out on the field. Quarterback keeper, and he'll scamper ahead. Number one, Jalen Fowler on the keeper. For a five-yard gain. And you mentioned it, Damian. Five yards on the ground on first down. 
so important. And, and yet, sometimes you get away from what's true to you, and, and that's when you run into trouble. Again, you don't have to be sexy on offense if you're a and If you are a running team and you can get four or five yards of carry, I'll take it. Play action. That one tipped, and Burkhalter can't come up with it. And what those four or five yards can do for you, create opportunities on play action. It's a good defensive play there by Bryant for the tip pass, but Burkhalter was open on that play. And that's what running the ball will get you, and a and does not want to get away from their strength, which is running the football. It's a tight ball game here, though, partner. Bryant, credit to the Bulldogs, got down early. Did not stop fighting. And now these two teams are in the proverbial dog fight. The handoff to Tootin straight up the middle. And good for a first down. And there's Tootin again. When in doubt, give it to Bayshaw. And that's one of those opportunities where you can just, hey, we got one of the best running backs in the ball game in the Big South Conference. Show you scrimph, not strength, but scrimph. That right there, my friend, is scrimph by Bayshaw too. So first and 10 for North Carolina A&T from the Bryant 24. Tootin gets the call again. And this time the hole closed up quickly. Still a solid four yard, five yard gain for Tootin again. You don't have to hit a home run every time. Singles produce runs as well. That, that's only a close up quickly for a guy who averages almost eight yards a carry, not for you know everybody else. Listen, you don't, you know, just to cross <laughs> sports, you don't have to hit a home run every time. Tony Gwynn had a Hall of Fame career hitting singles. The sweep, Graves, and that door closed quickly. As Ryan Sadler, the middle linebacker, was there to keep the lane shut. And what that does here is set up a big third down defensively for Bryant. And again, on a third and five situation, with the type of running team you have, you don't have to put the ball in the air. You can you know, lean on your, on your run game here, or you can put the onus on your senior quarterback, Jalen Fowler, to make a play. So third and five. The ball at the 20. Fowler, play action, throws, and that one behind the receiver and incomplete as Burkhalter ran just ahead of the route. And just off on the timing there, Burkhalter you know, with the field situation, couldn't really sit down on that pass. It was a bit behind him. Not the best pass in the world, but again, if you're the caliber receiver that Burkhalter is, you sit down on this route, not able to sit down on it and come back to it and make that catch. Ag is going to have to set up for a field goal attempt. So a 37-yard field goal attempt for Andrew Brown. Hold this down. Kick is good. And a very important three points for North Carolina A&T to separate these two teams by a full amount of points more. Fall fun made easy. That's totally Target. Bryant going to need more than a field goal to try and take the lead here as the Bulldogs will get the ball back. 
The Aggies able to hang three on the board after the muff punt, making it a 17 to 13 game with a buck 50 to go here in the third quarter. Andrew Brown will send this one deep. It's fielded by the up back. Still up <laughs> and by Young. yardage. We'll go ahead to the 45-yard line. So the Bulldogs are going to have some great field position again to begin a drive. Well, any attempt to limit the return game for Brian, you kick it short, still going to start with great field position for Brian. And, you know, this is an opportunity for Brian again to put a drive together. They've shown that they can move the ball on North Carolina a and and they just got to execute. Put a drive together. Drive stalled inside the five-yard line on the previous drive. So now he's got to put it all together and try to get in the end zone. Defensively, a and has not been able to get pressure on Eckhouse, and he's been able to pick apart the secondary. Here's Byram. Tries to turn the corner, but there's nowhere to go. Yeah, Byram's best run of the ball game was his touchdown run. Other than that, he's been bottled up. But you got a Bulldog player down. Trevor Smith looked down at that left knee, and we'll see what's going on after the athletic training staff will tend to him. And at this point of the ball game, with Bryant not really being super effective running the football, you're going to depend on Eckhouse and that wide receiver core to move the ball down the field, and that's what they want to do anyway. Appears he's all right, up on his own feet and walking to the bench under his own power, so always great to see. This North Carolina a t squad will have a week off. Then Edward Waters, a Division II club, will come to town. And after that, It'll be a trip to Robert Morris, another former NEC foe. And so a and with that week off, you know, you still got a you know, quarter and a half here in this ball game. What are they going to do with that quarterback situation in that off week? Back house, play action. The big heave down the seam, and it's just past the outstretched arms of Prochaska. And again, a deep shot from the Bulldogs. And, you know, they've been dinking. They've been dunking a lot. But when they can pop one deep, they will have an opportunity for chunk plays there just out of the outstretched hands of Prochaska. We saw a huge play. Yeah, we saw Eckhouse connect with Ruggieri earlier on a deep ball. He lofted it up, gave the Prochaska enough time to try to run under that one sets up a big third down here third and nine at house canvassing throws over the middle and that one broken up frederick could not hold on as that aggie secondary applied some pressure after the ball hit his hands the two wide receivers in the same zone there frederick and ac white for bryant but the defense of north carolina a t steps up on third down to get the Bulldogs off of the field and you know it's been a while since Aggies defense has been able to create a situation where like hey you know it's not a long drive from Bryant so it has to feel good defensively for the Aggies to get off the field. Ethan Getman now into punt he has an 82 yard punt to his name last season against St. Francis and he gives this one a ride inside the 20 the fair catch secured by Jones and that is how you flip the field. That is how you flip the field, but most importantly, Monty Jones securing that punt. That was a gift that Bryant gave to A&T for the Aggies to put three points on the board. So now with A&T coming up with a stop defensively, you backed up a little bit in your zone. You don't want to put the ball in harm's way through the air. Not unless something is wide open. I'm, I'm assuming that a t is going to try to run that football again. I'm impressed defensively 
with the line here in the second half defensively for Bryan really limiting the run game, so to speak, for a &T. Jalen Fowler is the quarterback on this drive. 67 seconds to go here in the quarter. Play action, Fowler rolling out, eyes up the field, throws into double coverage, and that one is knocked away as Tamon Cook could not secure it. The Marshall transfer. The pass was there for Cook. Just broken up on the contact. He got sandwiched. Yeah, Cook had an opportunity. They had to make a big play and had the defense fooled on the play action pass, but just couldn't come down with the grab. North Carolina A&T quickly back to the line of scrimmage. This time the Aggies keep it on the ground. And Tootin is hip tossed down to the grass. You see again defensively limiting the Aggies now. Tootin has gotten his fair share of four or five yard gains. Hadn't busted one for a 20, 30 yarder. Had a 39 yard touchdown last week versus South Carolina State. Really impressive on the ground. They've limited Tootin somewhat in this ball game. Third and 10 for North Carolina A&T. From its own 19, and now we have a whistle. Let's see what the flag and the whistle is about. To 40 seconds. 4-0. Adjusting the game clock. Here. Four. Zero. So the game clock will be adjusted to 40 Thank seconds. You. And it didn't register with Brandon McCain that his mic might not have been on the first time. And now we are ready to go. Hey, you got to be very careful. For a &T. Take what the defense gives you. Jalen Fowler. Same time trying to pick up the first. Fowler dumps it off. He's got Tootin. And he's across the 30 and up to the 33, and that'll be good for an Aggie's first down. So a big-time play buried deep in your own end of the field. And that is the value of Bayshaw Toop. Not only can he run the football, but excellent receiver out of the backfield. And that type of skill set can open up the offense for you. And on a third and long situation, you don't have to go crazy and throw deep passes. Tootin there picks up that first down. And that will do it for the third quarter of action. Four-point game here in the Gate City. When we return, the final 15. We're back after this on ESPN3. There's over 450 million hoopers out there. One will outscore the country and put Norman on the map. Less than 1% of high school players get a scholarship. Odds a freshman would lead the nation in points and assists? One, and never been done. 1.3% of college players get drafted. Only one would drop 48 and 11 in the conference finals. One would know this is just the beginning. Trey had a one and a half billion chance to get here, but he saw a possibility. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, Wherever you go, Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion. Obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. The B1 Performance Patch elevates physical functions by transforming carbs into glucose used to fuel the body. Don't compete without it.
Visit buyb1.com or on social media at B1Patch. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Back with you in Greensboro, North Carolina. North Carolina A&T leading Bryant 17-13 in the Big South opener. Both teams will move into non-conference portions of their schedule next. Southern Connecticut State will link up with Bryant on the 8th. Edward Waters will come to Greensboro on the 15th. Fowler to the outside, finds Cook, and he gets smashed immediately by JT Anderson. Yeah, that play was dead in the water as Jakari Caldwell could not come up with the necessary block to spring his teammate there. And JT Anderson slow getting up after making the tackle. Important drive here to start this fourth quarter, both offensively for North Carolina A&T and defensively for Brian. Your A&T, you put a drive together, if you get a field goal out of it, put some points on the board, you're up by a touchdown. If you get in the end zone, you really put Bryant behind the eight ball to have to answer your score. Again, Fowler not having a tremendous night through the air. Aggies want to lean on their run game here. Bobbled that snap, got it to Tootin somehow, and he'll get wrangled down to the ground. And that was a disaster averted there. Fowler, like you mentioned, bobbled the snap. Still got it to Tootin, but Tootin was met in the backfield immediately. Tackle for loss is going to set up a third and super long here for the Aggies. They were able to pick up that third and long late in the third quarter. See what they do here. It's third and 17. Well, if you're North Carolina A&T, you don't want to do anything that's going to put you at risk for a turnover. Because that would give Bryant some great field position to potentially take the lead. Fowler. Flush from the pocket. Scrambling around. He'll tuck it as he crosses the 30. And is brought down. And that'll bring on the punt unit as Fowler failed to reach the original set of sticks. What's well, a smart play by Fowler? Didn't see anything he liked downfield. Scanned again after scrambling a bit. Here you see on the replay. Pocket kind of collapses. A little bit of pressure there from the edge. Scrambles, gets as much as he can and, you know, lives to play another set of downs. Aggie's going to punt the ball away, still holding on to that slim lead. Lakados back deep for the Brickhouse punt. A high end-over-end -end kick. The fair catch signaled for and secured this time by Lakados at the 32-yard line. So Zevi Eckhouse and company back out on the field for the Bulldogs with a chance to take the lead for the first time tonight. Eckhouse, Zevi that is. You know he wants to put the ball in the air. Hadn't had a ton of success on the ground. What they have been successful with is that air offense and just finding spots in that secondary for A&T. Eckhouse 19 of 32 for 213 yards. Had that one big play to Jerry. Had to settle for a field goal. Aggie still holding on to the lead. The handoff. And a big gain on first down. An eight-yard carry. A nice run to start the drive. McKendy. 
A nice run to start the drive there by McKinley. The Ottawa, Ontario, Canada native. A sophomore, 5'9", 200. And that's some recruiting there. You get a kid out of Iowa to come to Bryant in Rhode Island. That's some nice recruiting there by the Bulldogs. Second and three. Eckhouse under pressure. That one batted down, and it's intercepted. And that's the big play defensively that the Aggies have been waiting for. What a play. Janoris Robertson, the big man with the pick. And this time, the pressure gets to Eckhouse. Got pressure off the edge. Safety blitz there. Jermaine McDaniel. Yeah, and McDaniel creates an opportunity for his teammate. And Janoris Robertson just makes a play. That all started with Jermaine McDaniel there getting a big old paw on that football. And the beautiful thing about it is McDaniel really beating a, a tackle, you know, really going underneath that block and getting a hand on the ball, and Robertson does the rest. Big turnover there for the Aggie defense. Going to be setting their offense up to do something special here. If you're North Carolina a and this is where you can win the ball game right now with a touchdown. a and might have just gotten away with a delay of game. That one floated up for Burkhalter. And, you called and it, he's out of bounds. Yeah, I got to see the replay on that one. You called it. Take a shot. First play, Burkhalter. Thought he came down with it. He's not really protesting that call. His helmet came off. See the replay here. Fowler puts the ball where Burkhalter can get to it. Oh, and that's his, a touchdown. His foot was down. Yeah, I'm not sure if he bobbled it on the way down. Didn't get a good view of it there. It's a better angle here on the replay. You might see Coach Washington calling a timeout here to give get a better look at that one and the replay booth has called for another look the field judge joseph eddie called that one incomplete had a foot down there here. was the ball, ball secure that's a touchdown ball secured that's a touchdown ladies and gentlemen wow what a catch a sterling catch by mr burkhalter and you know what's so interesting partner is that there was zero showing on the play clock when the ball was snapped. Well, hindsight, my friend, <laughs> is 2020. You can't, that's not in question right now. The, what's in question is, was that a grab? And I, In my opinion, I think it is. But really, our opinion doesn't matter. It's the replay official, two booths down from us, that's looking at it right you now. Know, I think that's a catch. Either way, what a play by that was a, Burkhalter. That was a heck there. of a catch by Burkhalter. That's a catch, my friend. Now, I could be wrong, but I think that's a catch. Just like when I walk into a room with my wife. Be like, <laughs> <laughs> be like, he did something right. That is a catch. Uh, I, we're going to take another look at this. Our, our crew tonight with some great views. We've been ragging on Fowler a little bit this evening. He decides to make up for it here. First, not terrible defense there by Bryant, but ball secured, right foot down. Ball uh, is not ball, moving. Uh, it's not it really moving. No, he has both bit, hands we'll on see. it. He has both hands on it. Burkhalter does the entire time. You know, you got you to gotta reward that young man's effort. We're going to see, though. Brandon McCain has gotten the word from the replay booth. Big call here by the referee, Brandon McCain. After review, the ruling on the field has changed. The run and maintain possession of the ball. That's all the result of the play. And it's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Yeah, that's a heck of a, that is a sequence of events. At the end of this season, if a and can turn this thing around with a string of wins, the interception on a tip pass by D. Lyman. First play, take a shot in the zone. Burkhalter touchdown after the replay. And now you're feeling really good about yourself if you're the North Carolina A&T Aggies. What a grab. Yeah, that's it. Sports Center top 10.
If anyone's listening, man, maybe, maybe. I hope someone's listening for our sake. Brown punches it through with ease. It's a big turning point in this ball game, partner. 24-13, North Carolina A&T with the lead. As we head to a timeout, we're back after these messages on ESPN. Twenty-four, thirteen, North Carolina A and T with the lead after Sterling Burkhalter makes the catch of the season. Burkhalter needed a play. Someone for the Aggies had to make a play on the offensive side of the ball. Besides Bayshall Tootin, Fowler to Burkhalter initially waved off, but upon further review, and, and we can't say enough about the ball that. Jalen Fowler just dropped in there that over was a the perfect, defender's Perfect tips. pass there by Fowler. He hadn't had a great game pass in the football, but that there, that was a perfect pass. Brown sends this one end over end deep, and it is taken out by Frederick. Still on his feet, hit again, and now brought down shy of the 25. Yeah, I think that ball was fumbled there. That's Frederick. See the replay on that one. There's good coverage there. And that would have been disastrous for Bryant. After giving up that touchdown to fumble the kickoff away. You see Fowler again. Stoic on the Aggie sideline. And now the pendulum has swung back in the other direction. All of the momentum on the A&T sideline here at Truist Stadium. That's a great word, pendulum. And it definitely has swung to the side of the Aggies after it looked like Bryant had it all, you know, moving the ball up and down the field and got to within one point. Now the Aggies have retaken that momentum. Play action, Eckhouse. And there was some bump coverage there, but the pass falls incomplete. Eugene was the target. A double coverage there on Eugene Prunty. Able to break that pass up and Zevi Eckhouse, now he has to make a play for Bryant. He's been able to move the ball since the middle of the second quarter on, but given time on the interception, he didn't have any time. Turned the ball over, and now Bryant's going to need him to make a play. They want to get back into this one. Eckhouse throws this one toward the sideline, and Ruggieri unable to bring it in quickly. It is third down. You see not a lot of energy on that sideline of Bryant. And now, quickly, like you mentioned, third and long. Big play here defensively for the Aggies. See if they can get off the field. Eckhouse steps up, throws, and that one is intercepted by Prunty. His second pick of the game. Prunty. Eckhouse looked left, came back right, tried to look off Prunty. Prunty just steps in front of that one. Kalen Prunty showing you why he is wearing that number one. Usually when you're a cornerback and you wear number one, you know, you, you feel pretty good about yourself. And Prunty has had a whale of a game tonight. See here on the replay, you know, Prunty just steps in front of that Eckhouse throw. Another turnover for the Aggie defense, and now you see the defense of Bryant backs against the wall. Cannot allow a touchdown here. You have to limit the Aggies here on this possession. So Fowler is in at quarterback. First and 10 from the 39. Tootin. And a cleat came flying in at the end. Did you see that? And someone, someone missing a cleat shoe. here. And, you know, that could have been a big loss for A&T. But the toughness and strength of Tootin, I think he's looking for his, his shoe. Stop me. You know, in the last time, A&T got a turnover 
off of Eckhouse. They were able to turn that into seven points. They're able to do so on this possession. Really, really put pressure on Bryant. So defensively, the Bulldogs have to come up with a play here. Fowler goes up to Burkhalter, who able to grab it and haul it in. Number 85, Sterling Burkhalter. It will be tackled at the 27-yard line, and it will bring up third and three. The ball kind of hung up on Fowler. Burkhalter able to high point it, go up for the grab. Makes it third and manageable here. Burkhalter, after the first couple of targets, has really settled in here tonight. Well, when you, you're running different quarterbacks out for a and you're not really able to get into a rhythm as a wide receiver. You don't really know who's going to be throwing you the passes. So now they've settled in on Fowler here, and they've been able to connect Fowler and Burkhalter on several pass plays. The handoff. And that one blown up by Andreessen. You see a Joe Andreessen sighting. Third and short, Aggies trying to keep it on the ground. Andreessen not fooled. Shoots the gap untouched. Solo tackle for the two-time Big South Defensive Player of the Week. Here will put a four in the box. You see on the replay, Graves not a chance to get started as Andreessen in the backfield and Bulldogs needed that stop to force a field goal here. It'll be a 47-yard attempt for Andrew Brown. His long on the season is 49. Hold is down. The kick is blocked. It's blocked. Still loose and now picked up by the Bulldogs. And this is going to be interesting. And the Bulldogs have some room to run. It's Juan Wood. And he's into Aggie territory. That's a big play. And a flag comes flying in. It's a big special teams play there by Bryant. They gave one away on the botched punt earlier this time. Andrew Brown, long field goal attempt blocked with a good return. But it may be coming back. We'll see what the flag is. There are two different flags on the play. And we'll see what Brandon McCain and his crew have to say. With 9.02 to go, a and leads by 11. Damian Jackson, Jr. There is a flag on the play. Personal foul. Participating without a helmet. Kicking team, number 54. The 15-yard penalty is added to the end of the run. First down, Bryant. And now the Bulldogs are in prime position to earn a treat. My goodness. And that's a huge play, ladies and gentlemen. Not only do the Bulldogs hold after the Prunty interception, but they block the field goal, get a good return. And Damian Jackson Jr. just trying to make a play, but you can't play without a helmet, young man. You know, that's, that's for one, your safety. Right. That's one of those safety rules. And, yeah, and you, as a player, you know, you're just trying to make a play. Right. First down and, 10. And, and that's a tough way to be punished for something that, I mean, it's not like you took your own helmet off, obviously. And so now the Aggie defense has to step up, rise up, and hold Brian off. So it'll be first and 10 from the 30, and now... A timeout is taken by North Carolina A&T. Sam Washington didn't like something he saw out there. They're first. And we'll step aside timeout as well. A&T up by 11. We're back after this on ESPN3. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. 
Here at First Citizens, we try and educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. Whether you're a contractor or do-it-yourselfer, Sunbelt Rentals is committed to making it easy to get the tools and equipment you need. With a vast network of locations across the U.S. and Canada, no one brings more yes to your project. Our broad inventory and dedicated team of experts makes equipment rental absolutely available, positively reliable, and unquestionably easy. Visit sunbeltrentals.com to reserve your equipment or find a location near you. Musco Lighting. We make it happen. It's time for the Hercules Tires. Strong move of the game. And Sterling Burkhalter with this touchdown. That's the strong move of the game. Brought to you by Hercules Tires. Strong. And we're back to live action. I saw Byron on the carry. That's a big defensive series here for a and had, had retaken that momentum after that Burkhalter touchdown reception and then an interception. Put yourself in great field position to just get points and extend your lead. But that block field goal along with the 15-yard penalty. Now Bryant back knocking on the door trying to get in the red zone. Second and seven. From the 26. Eckhouse. Looking, looking, throws, and it's intercepted. Another big play defensively for the Aggies. Let's hear it from that Aggie. David Laney on that INT for the Aggies. Third interception of the night for North Carolina A&T. Eckhouse had time. Tried to fit it over Laney. That's had it gone over Laney, still probably would not have been able to complete that pass. Not sure what Eckhouse was looking at. That's a whole lot of gray jerseys. We'll take a timeout. We're back after this in green. That's totally Target. North Carolina A&T's defense continues to answer the call here, Damian, as the Aggies lead it 24-13 with 8-13 to play. And the offense is back out on the field for the blue and gold. And that was the first time I think we've seen Jalen Fowler go under center. Well... At this point in the ball game, with an 11-point lead, you're backed up in your zone. You don't want to make a mistake with a bad snap on a 
from your center. So you just get underneath the center and give it to Tootin. But in this second half, defensively, Aggies have been opportunistic. Three straight turnovers for the Aggies, really thwarting the offense of Bryant. The handoff again. And not much room to operate for Tootin. This is your eight-minute offense if you're a and You know, the object of this drive is not so much to score, but to run clock, force Bryant to use the rest of their timeouts, get three, four first downs. If you have to punt, you'll flip the field, create, you know, a, a situation where Bryant has to drive the length of the field with not a lot of time, no timeouts left, just to score a touchdown, and you'll still have the lead in the ballgame. Third and four now for North Carolina A&T. Working deep into the play clock. Ten seconds still to tick off. The Aggies keep it on the ground. Tooting ahead for the first down and more. He's up to the 25. And that'll earn a new set of downs, and the sticks will move ahead. Yeah, that's a big first down for North Carolina A&T. And what it does is, you know, it guarantees another two three potentially four minutes if you pick up another first down so you'll force bryant to use timeouts and and it wasn't a huge hole there off left guard there for tootin but with his power and burst through the hole he was able to pick up that first down so fowler will now work from the shotgun Another handoff, and another few yards for the Aggie offense. But if, you'll you'll take that if you're if you work in three or four yard chunks. Right now, it works. I mean, that, that's just it. That's what you're looking for. Three, four yards, preferably four. Pick up that first down and keep the clock moving. Force Bryant to use their remaining timeouts to stop the clock. And again, it's a two score ball game. So you know Bryant's going to have to score a touchdown. Potentially get an onside, kick a field goal, get actually score a touchdown, two-point conversion. Onside, kick a field goal just to tie it. So, you know, they're really behind it here as we wind down the fourth quarter. The swing pass. Tootin plows ahead, and he's able to gain a few more. But you know what? Let's bring it back now to the Andrew Brown field goal that made it 17-13. That was a huge three points there because it forces Bryant to now have to go for two on a touchdown. Yeah, definitely, and the Aggies didn't get greedy after Bryant had cut the lead to one, 13-14, on their field goal. Aggies able to get that field goal back and then tack on that touchdown by Sterling Burkhalter, and so... You know, now with that double-digit lead, and not only a double-digit lead, but forcing your opponent to have to get a two-point conversion is, looms large right now. The mist starting to move back into the region. Fowler, two-step drop towards the sideline. And that one is hauled in. It'll be good for a first down. Got a Jakari Caldwell sighting last week in the win versus South Carolina State, 74 yards and a touchdown. For double eight, his first reception of this ball game. So another first down for the Aggies. The Bulldogs do have all three timeouts in their pocket. At some point, you have to consider probably using them. Not consider. You're going to have to unless you just want to take them back to Rhode Island with you. And I don't think that Coach Merritt will do that for Bryant. The handoff as the ground attack continues to pound ahead for A&T. Graves up the middle for nice gain on first down. Blasted there at the end by Bayside, but not before he picks up six yards. A lot of people talk about Bayshaw Tootin. And rightfully so. But Wesley Graves, the 5'9", 225-pound redshirt freshman, comes out of a very strong high school football program in GW Danville up in Danville, Virginia. 
and, and he knows how to put his head down and run. And, and you're toting, you know, 220 plus. Give him a head of steam, and he's a north south runner. Really hard to bring down, much like Tootin. Second and four. And another draw. And we have a timeout taken by Bryant. Yeah, Coach Merritt has to take that timeout, trying to preserve some clock. It's going to be third and short here, actually. They're going to give A&T the first down on that carry. I thought it was going to be third and short. The initial spot looked a little short. We're going to take the timeout with them. There's 2.41 to go. We're back after this on ESPN. Two forty-one to go in this one. North Carolina A&T using the ground to try and keep this clock moving as best they can, forcing Bryant to take a timeout. The Bulldogs with two more to go. Though actually, the scoreboard now saying that the Bulldogs have three timeouts, and I think Sam Washington would like maybe the officiating crew gave Bryant their timeout back they after may have. the spot. And now we're going to have a replay review based on the spot of the football. Well, initially it looked like the line judge spotted the ball short of the first down, and I think that's why Coach Merritt and Bryant called that timeout to try to come up with a third down stop and pres preserve some clock. Which would make complete sense. That makes, that makes all the sense. But, again, I don't wear black and white. No, no. You're, you're in blue and white tonight. I'm in blue and red and white. And you look spiffy, my friend. So do you. I mean, you know. We I try. I do what I do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It takes a lot to get the two of us TV ready. <laughs> that is for sure. But we got it done. We got the job done tonight. It's been a pretty good ball game. It's been a tale of, 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 of two halves, I think. In that first half, a t looked pretty comfortable. For most of the first half, and Bryant got a field goal late and was able to take a little bit of momentum into the locker room break, and they came out and put a good drive together, a touchdown drive to start the third quarter. And, you know, there they grabbed that momentum from a and got as close to 13 to 14 before the Aggies put a field goal of their own to, to stretch the lead out a bit. But turnovers here have really been the – tail of this fourth quarter for Bryant. After review, the rule on the field has changed. The runner did not make the line of game. The ball was placed at the 45 and a half yard line. It's third down. So it will be third down, but the question is, is Bryant being charged with the timeout? That I don't know. I mean, they that's the reason behind calling the timeout. As you see here, Tootin clearly short. If you go by the... Yeah, oh yeah the line to gain in the and the initial spot was correct right. actually and you know when we saw that they moved the change head linesman Jeff Lehu spotted that one short but now it's going to be a big third and one and you know they're going to run the football be interesting to see and it looks like Bryant will be able to retain its timeout because of the replay that's huge that is a huge break for the Bulldogs yeah, I think play action here will completely fool Bryant here. The handoff. And he's off. One man to beat. Graves able to take it into Bulldog territory. The Graves able to sneak through that line. Bulldogs had 10 people within the, the line of scrimmage. Graves able to burst out of there. One man to beat tries to hurdle the defender to get to the zone. But nevertheless, Huge first down here. See Graves just weaving his way through that initial bulldog wave of defenders. One man to beat. Tries to hurdle Khalid Shabazz Williams. Actually, TJ Butler there tries to hurdle Butler. Not able to do so, but does pick up the first down. Did you see how quickly he was able to get to the next gear? Well, he sidestepped a few... Defenders able to get to the secondary. Tootin now changing field. 
Works towards the 30 and is able to somehow get back to the line of scrimmage. A lot of running there for a half a yard gain for Tootin. It's more running than you and I have done today. Most Well, I've actually... Did you get a couple miles in well, today? I didn't have power Okay. from 6 p.m. yesterday evening. I didn't have power when I left home at around 2.30. So, I mean, what else is there to do when you don't have power? You get a... I didn't get a run in. I got a brisk walk in. Okay, fair enough. You know, get that blood a little power flowing. walk. A little power I walk. I don't think it was a power walk. Just to, <laughs> to be honest with little, you. Little oh, I was in semi-chill Check out the neighborhood. Yeah, see what's I was going in on. semi-chill Okay, yeah, okay. No doubt. Fair enough. But, um, got the heart rate slightly <laughs> elevated. <laughs> yeah, just a smidge. <laughs> just a smidge. Not too much. I wouldn't say it was a full. I, I didn't break a sweat, but you know, got a little fresh air. You know, I put on a whole workout outfit to walk slightly. Well, the ROTC guys were in the end zone doing their push-ups for the 24 points that A&T has collected so far in the night. I think I can give you a 24 push-ups now. I mean, I'm not going to do it. I think I can give it to I, you. But listen, you can't it. say things like that on the <laughs> air and then not expect to have to do it and follow through. I mean, that's light work. It's nothing. You keep talking like this, and yet I don't see you care, down, care down to, here doing care it. Care to so. wager? No, I'm okay. good. <laughs> I mean, scam money don't make money. <laughs> Shoot her. Here's Tootin. Throws a stiff arm and rolls ahead past the 25. <laughs> Yeah, scared money don't make money, my friend. Listen, I, I have a feeling you could still pump him out <laughs> as Bryant will take another timeout. I, I'm only seeing one more timeout remaining for the Bulldogs, but still no official word. And at this point, Aggie's trying to run the clock out. You know, if Bryant's not able to, you know, make a miraculous comeback in this last 120 seconds, still a great effort from Coach Merritt and his bunch just coming up short. Listen, it's not easy to go on the road at any level of college football, especially with as much uncertainty as there was this week and everything going on around Hurricane Ian and teams shuffling their schedules. And yet they stayed true to the kickoff time here and it ended up being the right decision. For the most part, the weather held off. And it was a beautiful night for football here in Greensboro. And Brian, do you look at their schedule? Playing a, a, a pretty tough schedule early on at FIU, and, you know, that was a close loss. They played some close ball games. I mean, they know how to hang tough with teams getting their first win last week versus LIU. Just coming on a road. This is a long road trip, adverse conditions with Hurricane Ian. You know, again, prayers, thoughts to anyone affected by Hurricane Ian, but, you know, valiant effort by Brian. Looks like they're going to come up short. Tootin. Now with more than 100 yards on the ground for the fourth consecutive game, so he needs one more 100-yard game against Edward Waters to tie Tariq Cohen for the school record in consecutive 100-yard rushing games. And anytime you are mentioned with Tariq Cohen, if you're an A&T running back, you know, if you're a running back in on the FCS level, you know, that's rarefied air. And, you know, if many of you remember Cohen, he was a problem when he was here at, in Greensboro. So, <laughs> listen, he was a problem in Chicago, too. He's still a problem. He's an electrifying player. And if you're a Bayshaw Tootin, great to be mentioned. The toss. In that breath. Tootin. Still on his feet, down the sideline, and he's forced out of bounds at the 11. And on fourth down, who do you go to? Bayshaw rooting, tooting. And that's ball game, fellas. Again, four straight. 100-yard game for Bayshaw tooting. And, you know, again, a t didn't play perfect. And they didn't play perfect last week against South Carolina State, but if you're Coach Washington and that Aggies coaching staff, you'd rather get the win and be able to coach your guys up during the week on a win rather than a loss. And that will do it here in Greensboro. 24-13, our final score. As you see Sam Washington and Chris Merritt meeting 
in the middle of the field for the first time as opponents. A nice discussion there. And a hard-fought game on both sides in this one. Damian, your thoughts on the way everything shook out? My thoughts was a and really wanted to come into this game and control the line of scrimmage. They did so early on, jumped out to that 14-0 lead. Bryant showed great intestinal fortitude fighting back, but in the end, that Aggie defense is what stepped up and won this ball game in the second half for a and A tremendous ball game for the Aggies, who have now won back-to-back -back games. Head into the bye week, recover, and we'll welcome Edward Waters to town on the 15th. The Bryant Bulldogs will head home where Southern Connecticut State will await the Bulldogs in Smithfield, Rhode Island. As Bryant will try and get back on track after falling to one and four on the season. For my partner, Damian Banks, and our entire greensboro base crew, I'm Spencer Turkin saying so long and good night from Greensboro. The final score, 24-13, North Carolina A&T victorious in this one, improving to two and three on the season and moving to one and oh in conference play. You've been watching The Big South on ESPN3. Good night, everybody.